This hangout is now live. All right. Hi, everybody. This is Kelly from Books and Kisses and Viviana from Enchantress of Books. And we are interviewing the very awesome Dorinda Jones for our audio book loving series. We hope you enjoy it. Hi, Dorinda. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, Dorinda, we're totally excited to have you here today with us today. So, welcome. You. It's good to be here. <laughs> Thanks. Well, we, we are so happy that you're here with us and hanging out with us today. Um, throughout the um, entire process of the Audiobook Loving series, we have learned that the narrators, from the narrators rather, excuse me, that some authors have been heavily involved in the process of selecting and, and the whole process throughout the audiobook recordings, and some authors have been totally MIA. Can you let us know how your process has been for your audiobooks? Um, I'm not involved much at all. Um, I will say that, you know, they kind of let me know who that they were getting Lorelai King and everything, and I was quite excited um, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but I mean, the most I'm involved is is like Lorelai will ask me how to pronounce names or something. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's it's great. It's great just getting her feedback. So it's fun. Okay. So have you listened to her read the books and narrations? I listened to the first one um, all the way through. Um, and then I listened to a lot of snippets here and there. I will say that I have, just like I don't read my own books once they're published, because all I read is mistakes. <laughs> and kind of the same whenever, even with the audiobooks, I just, I'm so amazed at how Lorelai makes me sick like this wonderful author and I'm like because all I hear even with her doing it, is just mistakes I just hear mistake after mistake I'm like oh my god um, I do listen to a lot of the snippets though and um, she's just so amazing I, I just I feel really guilty for, <laughs> for not listening to more, them more than I do but um, yeah I'm kind of horrified by my writing quite often <laughs> no well. <laughs> well we're laughing because we love your books, and we're always going. You need to write faster. You need to get through because we we love them and we devour your books. So to hear that you think that that there are mistakes here, we're going. No, they're not. They're perfect. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> now, <laughs> well, see, I have read your books, and then I I devour them. Because you know they're you know you speed read and they're they're so good that you're going oh my god oh my god oh my god and you're reading them and so again I speed read and with audiobooks you kind of have to slow down the pace because you can't skim you I mean someone's reading it to you so you're at their pace um, and you can't skip ahead there's just none of that happening um, you get a bunch of more details that way that you may have missed. Right. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I love audiobook books that way, because um, you're forced to slow down. Um, are the na are the voices that you were when you were writing the books, the voices that you heard in your head for the characters more or less the same from what you're hearing Lorelai's interpretation? Um, I think Lorelai's Charlie is so amazingly perfect because it's she's kind of husky and sexy and you know oh my god I love her Charlie I, I even love her Reyes you know it's hard for a woman to do man it's just this, like man <laughs> she's got him down the only one that I did not see it see her that way but now I do is Cookie so now when I write Cookie I totally hear Lorelai you know because I'm like oh my god she came up with the most incredible voice for her and it's just so perfect and just so hilarious and just oh I, I adore I adore it I adore her her version of Cookie that's true Kelly you want to ask the next question um where are we at <laughs> All right, we just talked about Reyes. I was got, I got distracted. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was talking Sorry. about Reyes. Yeah. <laughs> I was having visions in my head. Um, <laughs> as a writer, you have different. You know, you have audio books, you have paper books. You know, all different versions of books. Um, what is it that you like about the audio books for your fans? Um, well, first of all, I love audiobooks, and I've loved audiobooks for years now. 
um, because I do a lot of traveling and um, I just they're just awesome to you know put in the, the player um, also it just helps me kind of keep up with my reading because I don't have as much time to read as I used to uh, which you know used to be days at a time compared to now like you know a few minutes at a time and um, so I just love them. I just, to me, it's. Some people are like, "Oh, well, it's cheating if you're if you're listening to the audio." But no, it's not cheating. <laughs> you're still getting literature. You're still reading just because it's not on the, the paper, not on the page. You know, um, I I just I love them. I just I always have. Me too. I will say that they're. It's more convenient now than it was back in the day when you had to have books on tape, and you're traveling down the road and you had to find. Tape number two, and it fell on the floorboard, or you know. Oh yes, I remember the day, sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the best. Yeah. And, and and I think on some audiobooks, you kind of have to be careful what books you're listening to in mixed company. That's very true. That's very true. I've, I've yeah, heard stories. Of, yeah, that's happened to me a few times. <laughs> yeah, you can't find the pause button quick enough. Nope. I mean, you got to explain to your 12-year-old daughter what that particular action was for, and you're going, no, we're not having this conversation right now, sweetie. No, we're not. <laughs> yes. No. But I know it's hilarious. At the, at the, now I can laugh about it. At the moment, we're going, not having this conversation. <laughs> no. But... um. You currently have two series, speaking of 12-year-old daughters in one case. You have a Charlie <laughs> Davidson series, which is, you know, currently eight books have been published. And I know that you're finalizing book number nine. Um, yeah. And then you have a Dark Light series, which is your YA series, which is why I'm saying 12-year-old. Um, and that one's the trilogy. Yes. Okay. Um, and both were narrated by Lorelai. Um, is that something that you asked for her to be in both, you know, the narrator for both, or how did that process go about, or, you know? Basically, you... talking to Lorelai, and she found out that, I think I told her that I had the Young Adult series coming out and everything, and, and I, I told her because the heroine in uh, the Dark Light trilogy is named after her. <laughs> it was this bizarre set of circumstances. I was having dinner with my agent, and we were going over names, and we started talking about Lorelai, and my agent was like, oh, that name's perfect. You should go with that. So, so my heroine's named after her. And so Ooh. he was, like, very intrigued by that. And um, I think that my producer, Nancy, wrote me. And she said, what would you think about Lorelai doing the, the young adult ones, too? And I was like, oh, my God, that would be so awesome. And, but I just had no idea. I knew she was talented. We all know she's talented. She's amazing. But when I heard the first... Um, book in that she's amazing like she sounds like a teenage girl she's just so she goes from Charlie this kind of husky sexy thing you know to this this teenage girl and she's adorable and she does the voices so fantastic and oh, I was so impressed I was just really impressed <laughs> yeah and I listened to both series and it's I know it's Lorelai I know it's her and it's almost like I'm hearing a 12-year-old version of her, maybe, you know, or rather a teenage version of her. And I'm going, oh, it's kind of cool that I get to hear, you know, it, she just does a great job. It really is awesome. So when I found out that you were doing the YA, I was like, oh, I wonder if she's going to do the one, two for the audio books. You become a fangirl of the narrator as well. So you're going, yay, when you find out. <laughs> so, um, Kelly, do you want to ask the next question, or do you want me to? Go for it. All right. So um, in previous interviews that we've um, seen you in or in conversations that Kelly and I have had with you um, y regarding, you know, the series or Lorelai, you are actually, as you know, we just saw you, uh, completely fangirl over her. Um, <laughs> um, but you actually, it, it's, it's a genuine. I mean, you, you have a spark in your eye when you talk about her. Um, and you actually believe that, you know, in the audiobook books as well. What is it about, you know, this whole process that you love about Audible books and, you know, that you like about them so much besides the fact that th there's another, you know, I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit because I, I'm losing, uh, <laughs> I'm going, I'm talking to Dorinda. Uh, 
you know, I mean, we're both, like, Kelly and I have had this series going on for a, little, for a little while. We're, like, in week three, I think it is. Yeah. And it still kind of dawns on us. We, we check each other on the emails, and so people that have been following us, we check each other on Facebook, and we're going, hey, you know, did we get this post, and did we get this? And we're like, hey, who are we talking to today and everything? And we still have these moments where, like, oh, my God, we're talking to Dorinda, you know, or, hey, we have this interview coming, and people are like, oh, you have this, and that. we're still fans. I mean, we're still fans. I am, too. Know? With you. <laughs> so it's like, it doesn't change the fact that we're, we like we still have our fangirl moments and stuff like that. So I apologize. I'm going off script here. Sorry. Um, so I'm going back on script. Um, so you have Lorelai for these two series. Yes. And we know that you have had other um, short no novellas and short stories that you're working on. And I know that sooner or later you're going to have other series and other books coming out. And sooner or later those are going to be and audiobooks. Have you had thoughts about other narrators that are going to be maybe thinking about or wish lists? Um, Males, yeah. females? <laughs> I do love <laughs> there. I do love there. I do have a handful of narrators that I absolutely love. Um, and some some that I listen to just I mean I'll listen to just because they recorded it, you know. Um, and but as far as my stuff, I hadn't really thought about it. I think I just kind of assumed that Lorelai would be there forever. <laughs> <laughs> you just just have my back. You just I'll do that for you. Okay. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it. Um, it is funny because uh, I'm putting out a um, Reyes point of view novella. Mm -hmm. It's coming out in probably around November-ish. Um, and I don't. I doubt they're actually going to do, and it's not going to be in print. So I doubt they're going to be in, in audio. But but then I, you got to wonder if uh, Lorelai would be doing okay with doing like the entire entire novella though from Reyes's point of view. She'd be like, I got to talk, talk to her about that. <laughs> Damn, why didn't I know that before? <laughs> I would have asked for that. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'll see what we can do. Yeah, I'm sure the three of us can 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 email her and say, "Hi, Lorelai." <laughs> Very true. See, and then she can put a bug in that producer's ear, and then they could think about, yeah, you never know. Could yeah. happen. I mean, get we'll a petition it. started, a thunderclap. I mean, there's so many options. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned that you do have narrators that you listen to. Who are some of your favorites? Um, oh my gosh! Every time people ask me this, I'm I, I just draw a blank. Okay, I love. Um, oh, see, I can think of the books that they've done, <laughs> but I don't. I can't think of their name. I love Chavia Gilbert. I love. Um, oh, what's okay. his name? Dale. Harry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> he does the Harry Potter. You know who I'm talking about? Jim Dale. I love Jim Dale. Um, I love Johnny Heller. I think he's hilarious. I love uh, the girl who did, I can't remember her name. She did uh, Presley Cole's The Poison Princess. She was fantastic. There's so many. Um, you yeah. know what's funny is that two of my favorite, my, probably two of my favorite audiobooks were narrated by men, but they're female audiobooks. I don't know. That's weird. I don't know, but actually, mostly I listen to women, but for some reason, um, and one of them, I can't remember, actually, I think both of them were Sandra Brown's. Two, two of my favorite audiobooks were Sandra Brown's. One was Envy. Sorry. It's Father's Day, and my dad is finally texting me back. <laughs> dad, you're telling me. <laughs> Okay, I ramble. She's getting called. It's not a problem. We're human. <laughs> I got my dog under the desk nudging me, wanting, wanting attention. So I'm trying to push her away. <laughs> That's why anyway, I put my slide. <laughs> the other one, oh, the other audiobook that I loved was, um, believe it or not, you guys, you you're too young for this, but you remember the Dukes of Hazard, the show, the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, watched it all the time. Okay, the dark-haired one. Um, what's oh. his name? Wopat, oh. Tom Wopat. Yeah, yeah. He he actually recorded a Sandra Brown book, and he was awesome. <laughs> I thought it was so good. I was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. But yeah, yeah. I'll I, didn't, it 
Okay. One of the first books that I started listening to when I started listening to audiobooks again was The Night Circus mm -hmm. and Jim Dale. Yeah, that's right. I did too. I listened to that. Yeah. Yeah. It was so good. It was like, um, you know, when you're a kid and your dad reads you a bedtime story, that's how it felt. Like listening to that story, you know, with Jim Dale reading it was like, you know, okay, now I need to go put my pajamas on and get ready to go to bed because I've got to listen to my story, which doesn't work very well when you're driving to work. But, yeah. yeah, I love. He's amazing. He's just incredible. But yeah, he is. He is. So, um, have you ever found like um, sometimes you go to pick up a book and you're just it's not grabbing you, um, but then you listen to the audio book and you are able to finally get into the story, or vice versa. I've had it where I've like listened to the audio book for one reason or another. You know, I didn't care for it and. I'm afraid now to pick up the book because I'm afraid I'm going to have that bad juju or something. Absolutely, I've done it both ways. I've I've tried. I've started an audiobook and didn't really get into it and everything. And I thought, but oh, but everybody's raving about this book. I it, it must be me. So then I'll pick the book up and it's fantastic. So I don't know. Was it? Was I having a bad day? Was mm -hmm. it? I mean, you just never know. Um, one of the ones that I had problems with was uh, I couldn't get into Gone Girl, and I picked it up a couple of times, and I was just like, oh, okay. And I think when I finally got the audiobook and I started listening to the audiobook, I finally got into it and, and listened to the whole thing. And she did her, I can't remember who the narrator was, but she did a fantastic job. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I've done that both ways, yeah. Yeah. Viv? Okay. Um, hmm. One of the questions that we've been asking um, our guests is that if you would tell someone that has never picked up an audio book um, before, what would you tell them to try? For them to try. Which audio book to try? No, uh, to get them to try an audio book. Like, how would you? What would you say to get them to try? Sorry. I would say that um, I would just tell them, you know, just to give it a try. But one of the things that throw people off is because it's such a different. Um, mental process that a lot of people they're like oh I can't get into audiobooks you have to almost kind of learn to process things auditorially that way instead of reading them you know and once you learn though oh my god it's like a four hour trip is ten minutes <laughs> because you're listening to an audiobook it just it time flies you you clean house for three hours and it takes you five minutes in your head because You've been listening to an audiobook, and so it's just so rewarding because it, it's it's like you're getting your multitasking, you know, <laughs> you're getting your reading in, and you're getting other work done. And so um, I just that's what I say: just give it a chance, but give it a good chance. You know, listen to an entire book and, and try to get get through it. And once by the time you're at the end, it's going to be second nature, and you're just going to be processing that like it, seeing it like a movie in your head. So, right. Yeah, we were we were interviewing um, one of our narrators that we had on the blog, and we were talking about that. And I've been, I'm guilty of driving to work and forgetting that I was driving to work. Sometimes I show up at the office. I'm like, oh, I hope I stopped at the stoplights. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You forget. You're like, did I even go through that town? I had to have. Right. Right. Uh, one of my my best stories that I like to share is I was listening to. Um, an audio book while I was training for my first half marathon and they got to a part in the scene where um, it was a very emotional part and they my two favorite characters out of this book and I'm out on a country road on a seven mile run and I literally had to stop running because I was crying so hard I had to sit down on the side of the road and collect myself and I actually had people stop because they thought there was something seriously wrong and I'm like no, it's okay. I'm just listening to a book. Go on without me. <laughs> oh, she's one of those. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I am a prior with, with books, and this was like, I, I, yeah, it was. I had to sit on the side of the road. Really ruined my time for my run. But that's when I kind of decided that I can't listen to really emotional books while I'm running because it doesn't work very well. But yeah. you do get lost in the story. I know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And I had a moment too recently at, at the day job where it's cubicle world. 
and it, the cubicles are not the tall ones, they're the short middle wall ones, and I'm typing away and everything, and you know, the characters are talking, and one of them was being a smart ass and sassiness, and just said something really hysterical, and I busted out laughing. Oh yeah. Um, no one's around me, they know I'm here by myself, but you know, everybody's around me in your own cubicles, and my leader, my, my boss, walks out and goes, what's so funny, I go, sorry, audio book. <laughs> It's okay, yeah. you know, it happens. They're like, okay. They just want to make sure you're not, you know, having conversations by yourself. I'm like, no, I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It happens. <laughs> there yet. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Or staring at a screen because it's just a good scene. And you're going, oh, spreadsheet, spreadsheet. <laughs> Back to work. Back to work. <laughs> I wish my my office manager would leave me alone so I could listen to audiobooks while I'm working. She always bugs me. Yeah. Not a whole lot of work will get done, though, so that's a problem. True. Well, thank you so much for being part of our series during that. We love your books, and, you know, thank you so, thank you much. so much. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> yeah. yeah, hold on, hold on. Oh wait, we're still live. Yeah, we're still live. Hold on. Is this where we like start doing funny things and like being all impromptu and getting close to the camera and like scared? No, we're the still live. Hold on.